Hi, my name is Farhad Safai. I was born in Tehran, Iran, and I'd like to share my immigrant story with you. The picture that you see is, uh, is the one with Chief Justice John Roberts, and a number of my colleagues and myself took this picture when he was visiting us at the administrative office of U.S. courts during our uh, holiday celebration in 2005. As a way of background, I had shared my immigrant story with a friend and colleague, Chuck Dior, the uh, clerk of the court for the uh, U.S. District Court in Southern Alabama. And uh, he liked the story and he invited me to be a guest speaker in one of their ceremonies. The ceremony that I was invited, it was, uh, it, uh, was held in 2017 and, and it was uh, presided by Honorable Judge Murray. This is the agenda for the ceremony and also the oath of allegiance that was taken by 25 individuals um, who were accompanied with their families and friends. And uh, they came from 21 different countries and it was truly an honor for me to be as part of, uh, of this celebration. If you're an American citizen and have never been into one of these ceremonies, I highly recommend to, um, if you find an opportunity to attend, uh, attend them because um, they're highly emotional and, and very endearing. My immigrant story started in Iran in 1975, when Iran was in turmoil. At the time, I was in my junior year of engineering study um, at a very good uh, Iranian university called Aryameh University of Technology. Because of the unrests and uh, protests in universities against the Shah, the government canceled two of our semesters. So I decided to leave the country because the concerns that I may not be able to attain my engineering uh, degree. I applied and was accepted in University of California, University of Southern California, USC. So I left Tehran in August of 1975 for Los Angeles, uh, California through Tokyo, Japan which is much longer path than uh, coming through Europe. But uh, that's a story for another day. After one year at USC, I transferred to the uh, to University of California, Berkeley, where I received my bachelor's degree in civil engineering and my master's degree in structural engineering. I had started my uh, a PhD program in 1975 when the Iranian revolution happened and I decided uh, that I needed to discontinue uh, my further education and look for a job. I found my first job in a nuclear design firm in San Francisco. I worked on bringing graphics to computer-assisted engineering design and analysis of nuclear power plants. Through my job, I was able to, uh, to obtain my green card in 1981 at the uh, United States District Court in Northern District of California in San Francisco. My next job was with Chevron Corporation. This was ironic uh, because uh, when I was studying at UC Berkeley, I was uh, an attendant uh, and pumped gas in a Chevron gas station in East Oakland. And uh, we had a full service 
cleaning windshields and, and the like at the time. But in the, uh, my job in Chevron Corporation uh, was involved with uh, computer applications for design, construction, and uh, launch of offshore platforms. Uh, I also managed and design, uh, managed the design and construction of uh, office buildings in California. I was a, a member of the team responsible for uh, oil production facilities in Tengiz Field in the Republic of Kazakhstan. Um, I then worked uh, on improving Chevron's uh, capital project uh, management process. This effort resulted in a significant uh, saving and it was uh, covered in, in the Financial World magazine. As you can see, uh, the picture of uh, young Farhad Safai with uh, mustache. After uh, Chevron, I moved uh, to the field of management consulting uh, domestically in the U.S. and internationally. I had the opportunities, uh, opportunity to work with uh, some of the, uh, very, uh, the very best and some of the largest corporations uh, during that period. After uh, Chevron, I joined uh, the uh, third branch of the U.S. federal government, uh, U.S. courts, and uh, I had the great honor that uh, starting in 2013, I started serving as the chief technology officer uh, for U.S. courts. U.S. courts uh, uh, consist of 94 districts, uh, district and bankruptcy courts, and 12 circuit courts. Uh, the court system uh, also includes uh, some 8,000 probation officers and staff uh, with which uh, I had the pleasure to work a number of years before my position as the chief technology officer. I, my work for the judiciary was very rewarding to me and it was uh, 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 truly an honor because I feel uh, the uh, independent and the strong judiciary is fundamental to our uh, democracy uh, and which is uh, frankly something that uh, attracts many immigrants from around the world uh, and I feel uh, privileged to have been uh, part of it. As chief technology officer, uh, the, uh, uh, my office had the responsibility to explore the applicability of emerging technologies um, like machine learning and artificial intelligence to improve the judiciary's uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, we also established best uh, technology and, and project management standards and practices uh, within U.S. courts. In 2018, I retired from U.S. courts. Since 2013, I have uh, been teaching at George Mason University in Virginia. Uh, I teach uh, project management uh, at undergrad and graduate level. Uh, this has been truly one of the most re rewarding experiences in my uh, life as I have been uh, able to and had the opportunity to positively influence the career path of some of my, my students. Because of my career, I have been fortunate to visit many countries uh, such as Indonesia, Russia, Norway, Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela, and actually lived in London for a couple of years. I've also uh, lived in uh, a number of places in uh, Northern and Southern California, Texas, Virginia, and now in nation's uh, capital region. As you can see, uh, uh, I have also visited many places in the U.S. And in fact, I uh, had the pleasure to visit Mobile, Alabama twice uh, during my career. 
So this has been my journey. Uh, I ask the audience what their uh, uh, their immigrant story will be, and uh, I just reminded them to keep in mind that the sky is uh, the limit in terms of what uh, they can do in this country, and uh, pointed out that uh, America is the land of immigrants, and uh, and uh, and is as evidenced by the fact that 40%, four out of 10 Fortune 500 companies uh, were founded by immigrants or their children. And these are some of the uh, companies that fall into that uh, category. At the end, I uh, left the audience with my uh, uh, closing thoughts. Uh, in my case, education was the key and it's uh, one of the best investments that one uh, can make for themselves or their children, in my opinion. Having said that, uh, education is not the only path to success, uh, but regardless of the path that one chooses, I think it's uh, critical to make sure that uh, you always do the very best. Uh, you uh, com uh, accomplish things with excellence. Uh, you re it's a very competitive world and uh, you need to stand out and the average uh, will not cut it. Also, the world around us continues to change at a very rapid rate. Uh, in fact, as, as an accelerating uh, rate, the skills we, uh, we have today may be obsolete in a few years. So it is uh, critical to continue to learn and adapt with the changing world around us. Thank you for listening to my uh, immigrant story and I wish you all the best.